dear friends and at aspirants welcome back to high point again in this video we are going to learn about mac flecknow the famous mock heroic satire by dryden we were looking at works written by dryden and mac flecknow is one of the major work written by him mac flecknow is a uh, is a mock heroic Uh, satire and dryden he is the most representative author of the restoration age we are currently learning about the restoration age and the major works and the authors belonging to this age now about mcflecknow before learning that will let me introduce my website to you you can um, go to my website and see whatever you need to cover for your nt ugc net jr paper 2 english language and literature there we have done one by one every other lectures needed for you if you are interested you can join the course from the website itself a 15 percentage of off is going on there you can avail that and also follow me on instagram my id is right here there too we are sharing lot of variety of material study cards and many other things you can see the uh, you know previously added stories in order to uh, get insights into various things that we are shared already and also use this whatsapp number in order to reach out to me if you have any doubts queries questions related to the courses that we are sharing in our website or any uh, doubts regarding the videos that we are posting in uh, my youtube channel you can use this number or use the instagram platform to reach out to me okay okay moving on about mcflake now so you can start investing your time in covering this materials and revising them rather than uh, digging for materials because that consume lot of uh, efforts that needs lot of time to you know get into the proper study material so you can save that now the what is the full title of mcflecknow mcflecknow it is a shortened title a satire upon the true blue protestant poet ts okay so you must be very aware of it most of you have learned mcflecknow in your pg classes those who are learning pg classes and yet to uh, get into the restoration you will learn about it okay mcflecknow the uh, full title is mcflecknow or the satire upon the true blue protestant poet ts It's a mock heroic poem, mock heroic satire. Attacks Thomas Shadwell. So this uh, T S is uh, Thomas Shadwell. So I have seen multiple questions related to this title about whom and about satiring whom Dryden has written this work and all. So Thomas Shadwell, he is a contemporary to uh, Dryden. He was a playwright and an indifferent poet. See, he is making a personal uh, satire here. Dryden is making a personal satire against Thomas Shadwell. He doesn't like a a bit of uh, Thomas Shadwell. Whatever he does, whatever he uh, did, and whatever he says and uh, composed, everything he is mocking in here. What are the some reasons for his enmity? His means Dryden's enmity towards Thomas Shadwell. No. as personal and political level there are differences and differences we cannot see any similarity between these two people first one is political affiliations both of them had different political affiliation dryden was a tory while shadwell is a whig who is a tory in the introductory session of restoration age we have seen it if you have missed that video you can see that in the i button you can have that or uh, the entire playlist of the restoration age is given there the first uh, lecture is about uh, the the first lecture is itself is an introduction to the restoration age okay so after the puritan age one of the major differences or one of the major changes happened in the british society was that the political affiliations the emergence of two major political affiliations that is tory and whig what is tory tory is the one or group of people who actually supports the royal prerogatives and whig are the intellectual or the uh, more or less we can say who supports the parliamentarians okay who uh, who says that you know Uh, the group wig wigs say that you know a parliament is needed the parliament should rule the country uh, you know more powers must be given to parliament and all okay but dryden was a tory and shadwell was a wig and religiously do they have two different affiliations satirized the catholics and the anglican priest in the play the lancaster lancashire witches and uh, tegu o dively the gu or devilly the irish priest and offended dryden see actually thomas shadwell he wrote a play titled as the lancashire witches 
and Tegu or Devili, the Irish priest. And after composing, when composed this work, we can see he composed Shadwell composed this work in order to offend Dryden, and their literary preferences were also different. Dryden liked Shakespeare. So we can see that how Dryden venerates uh, Shakespeare in his uh, the essay on dramatic poetry, and he also spoke of very high of Johnson too. But he liked and loved Shakespeare. But Shadwell loved Johnson. Dryden's comedy of wit, Shadwell comedy of humor. So he preferred Dryden preferred a comedy of wit, while Shadwell preferred a comedy of humor. So in every other sense, these two people they had nothing in common, and they had. totally difference of affiliations and that led to a conflict and uh, shadwell you know composed works in order to offend dryden and in a way he also uh, wrote many works in uh, satirizing shadwell and macflecno is one among them dryden criticized shaftsbury in the medal see he criticized shaftsbury another writer in the work the medal and he provoked shadwell to write the medal of johnson bias asks an answer so shaftsbury and shadwell they were in good terms they, they were friends like so dryden promoted and provoked shadwell to write the medal of john uh, bayes as an answer to this work the medal and this was followed by macflack no so after this dryden came up with a wonderful personal satire macflack no when we see that see the work the content of this poem maybe some of you will feel that see this is too much whether shadwell was that bad no sh he was not that bad we will see the lad, uh, we will see uh, that part in the towards the end of this uh, video okay it portrays shadwell as mac mac means son of so uh, mac flecno portrays shadwell as mac son of flecno flecno here referred a poet known as richard flecno uh, according to dryden richard flecno was even Uh, was a less accomplished poet than Shadwell, so that's why he is termed as Macfleck. No, he is referred as Macfleck. No, it abounds in passages of brilliant wit. So here we can see his brilliance of wit, sarcasm, and strokes of mock heroic characterization. So what is mock heroic about mock heroic? The um, the type of work. we have already given a lecture in my web uh, website there we have a slot for prosody and for gratuitous speeches and all you can see a separate slot is given to mock heroic anyway what is mock heroic i'll give you a brief about it so heroic means they are epics in epics what we can see uh, you know kind of elevated style Uh, heroic deeds of heroes and celestial beings are depicted in a heroic language so that is taken there from there and uh, these type of less kind of important topics are introduced and uh, constructed in a heroic manner here shadwell is criticized and even uh, mocked and even um, sac you know satirized and uh, sarcastically represented as mac flecno and all son of flecno and this topic he is satirizing shadwell's mannerisms compositions and his conduct and all in a heroic manner how uh, the epic must have constructed how an epic or heroic deeds in a true sense must have constructed in same way mock mock in the sense in a in a disguised manner it is depicted the sarcasm that uh, or the wit that he is presenting in the satire that he is presenting against shadwell he is presented in a mock heroic manner so we can see a brilliant uh, usage of wit sarcasm and strokes of mock heroic satirization in this work and which is brilliantly done by dryden let's see the significance of the title of the poem it means son of flecno shadwell so the title is referred to thomas shadwell as son of flecno true blue means what is true blue Ex means extreme wig blue was the color of the badge assumed by the wig so it was the blue represents the color represents wig a true blue means extreme wig he chose flecno because it was synonym with dullard 
Fleckno in the sense he consider Richard Fleckno as less as a less accomplished poet than Shadwell so that's why he chose Fleckno because he find it uh, he finds it as synonym with Dallard already composed Fleckno by Marvel another uh, satire Fleckno an English priest at Rome so Fleckno um, already uh, used this uh, name Fleckno was used by Marvel in other work Marvel is um, Andrew Marvel which is titled as Flecno, an English priest at Rome. So that's how he considered Flecno as a suitable name given and uh, he find it as synonym with Dallard. Flecno, Flecno uh, means Richard Flecno. Flecno was an Irish writer of 17th century portrayed as the reigning monarch of the empire of Dallard. So this all these actions, all these things happening in this poem happening in a place known as Dullness. Empire of Dullness. So, Flecknoe is considered as the reigning monarch of Empire Dullness and now currently Flecknoe is looking for uh, a suitable heir to his uh, empire and finally he uh, ends up with Shadwell and he considers Shadwell as the most uh, suitable heir to his empire of, empire of Dullness. Okay, now let's see the summary. Uh, I'm not going to give the line by line summary. You can ask that in the comment section if you are eagerly wanting it. Uh, so if you want the line by line summary, you can ask that in the comment section. Okay. So um, let's begin the summary. Fregno and Augustus. I have given titles for the sessions. First one is from line 1 to 12 uh, in which we can see comparing of uh, Fregno and Augustus and who is Augustus. We will see that Flecno, undisputed monarch of the kingdom of Dullness, is on the search of a successor. So, Flecno now wants a successor, a suitable successor uh, who will spread the dullness more and more and who is more uh, stupid than himself. So, he is saying all these things in a witty manner. And Flecno is in search of a successor for his uh, empire of Dullness or Dullard. And he says he is to obey the call of death when the time comes uh, just as the Emperor Augustus. So, Emperor here is Emperor uh, Augustus is uh, the Emperor Augustus. He says that, Flegno says that anyway he has to obey the call of death. Death will come now I am old. I have to obey the call of death because Emperor Augustus, he was so powerful uh, he even obeyed the call of death. So, I also have to obey the call of death because I am also the king of uh, the emperor of the empire of uh, dullness. So, he started as an emperor from the young age and Flecknoe started writing at a very early age. So, Augustus, he took over the empire at a very young age. So, same way Flecknoe also started in a very early age. He was worried about choosing a, an heir for his kingdom. So, he was so worried about uh, to whom he should entrust his empire that he built so effortfully. So, all these things are mocking, uh, you know, and satirizing and sarcastically he is representing his uh, theme as well. Why Shadwell is chosen to rule? So, in the next session, we can see that Shadwell was chosen by Flecknoe to rule the kingdom or the uh, emperor, empire of dullness. In, uh, from line 12 to 28, you can see this. Shadwell was selected as a successor of Flecknoe by himself because he inherited the fullest measure of the paternal uh, quality of dullness. So, this is the first reason why he was chosen because Shadwell is the one who in inherited the fullest measure of the paternal parental quality of dullness so the first and foremost quality that one should have in order to rule over the empire is that should have at most or the fullest dullness so he is saying that see shadow is so dull and he is duller than Flecno and he is very much suitable to uh, rule the empire of dullness Shadwell is a perfect replica of his father so this is the first reason he is the first and perfect replica of his father and his earliest writings confirmed his well-developed dullness. So, how we can see that he is so dull? 
because his earlier writings shadwell's earlier writing confirmed that he is uh, a dull person and also he his writings are dull and he has a well dull, developed dullness with him nature chose his uh, physical corpulence as the receptacle of his intellectual darkness and stupidity see he he, he is making a body shame here he you know he satirizes and he is mocking his physical condition his physical appearance and he says that that truly reflects his intellectual darkness and stupidity so these are some of the reasons why uh, dryden is sorry Uh, shadwell is too suitable and there are two more just as thick fog and mist darken the day light shadwell's stupidity hinders all clear thinking and he is also middle headed he goes too far when he criticizes uh, shadwell okay he says that just as just as day light is obstructed by thick fog and mist see thick fog and mist can darken a day light darken a day so the same way shadwell stupidity is filled in his brain and it hinders it obstructs all the clear light that can uh, that wants to enter into his brain and he is also middle headed he is an oak tree which exercises its sovereignty over small trees in a dull manner he is like an oak tree and he uh, just as oak tree exercises its sovereignty over the small trees just like he is like that he is also has very dull manners now heywood and shirley here in the session dryden refers to two more uh, others that he finds dull heywood and shirley uh, from line 29 to 40 you can see this elizabethan poets heywood and james shirley were the four runners of shadwell so heywood and james shirley these two poets that he finds that uh, these two poets belong to the elizabethan age and they are the forerunners of shadwell and flecknow was sent to earth to prepare the ground for the great dullard shadwell so uh, flecknow heywood and james shirley these people were sent to earth by god in order to prepare the ground for the great dullard of shadwell so in order to prepare the way for shadwell in order to prepare the way for the great dullard that shadwell is going to rule in order to prepare the earth for that flecknow heywood james shirley was sent to the earth flecknow visualizes shadwell making his mark as a leader of a band of musicians in the presence of king charlie while sailing in a boat in river thames now flecknow he visualizes shadwell how shadwell is you know uh shadwell is surrounded by a band of musicians in the presence of king charlie while sailing in a boat in river thames so he is imagining that situation now we can see arian and shadwell song compared in the next session from line 41 to 51 shadwell with his fat body see he has a stout body that he contends he is making body shame here as well makes ridiculous gestures to direct his band so usually one who is leading the band will make gestures in order to lead the band here shadwell is also making body gestures and he is a body shaming him saying that he has a fat body he and he is making some ridiculous stupid gestures to direct the musical uh, band ironically compared to the greek uh, musician arion so arion is so so a superior uh, musician and he is well known for it he is greek and Uh, he is ironically sarcastically compared with shadwell's gestures and shadwell as a musician the dolphins charmed by his song waft him safe to his island when he has to be killed by his enemies so arian once uh, there is a story about him that he was uh, abandoned in a sea okay and uh, enemies expected that he was he will get killed but he sang a song and even the dolphins in the sea got charmed by his song song and he was wafted uh, by these dolphins to the island safely so that was the power of his music that melodious was his music so he is comparing uh, arian's musical powers with shadwell's large number of fishes loitered around shadwell's boat so here two fishes loitered around his boat 
not because of Shadwell's musical qualities, but to swallow the crumbs of bread thrown to them from the king's table. So king is also present there with him in the boat. So fishes also loitered around Shadwell's boat too, but in order to swallow the crumbs of bread thrown into the Thames from the king's table, not because of his musical qualities, just like Arians. Now, moving on, next we can see the troubles and bases you know, from line 52 to 54. The clumsy finger goes through the strings and he, his thumbs were armed with the sharp nails. With them, he made musical note troubles and bases. So, troubles and bases, these are musical notes. I don't have much awareness, much knowledge about it. But troubles and bases, these are musical notes. And he got sharp, long nails that uh, whoever is playing strings cannot afford to have. But he got sharp nails. That itself shows that he is not a good musician. So his clumsy finger, dull fingers going through these strings and his thumbs were armed with the sharp nails. And he is making troubles and basses these musical notes. The movement of his hand was so clumsy that it could be compared with the farmer's movements while threshing his corn with his nail. So he got nails in his thumb and with his thumb. And he says that his movements are so dull. Never feel that he is making uh, some movements with his finger in order to make some musical notes. But his movements were so clumsy that it could be compared. That movements can be compared with the farmer's movement. The farmer will me make some movements with uh, his fingers while, thresh uh, while threshing his corn with his nail into the soil so just like that he's making some hand movements and finger movements on the string it is so dull and it is so clumsy now Shadwell and Singleton uh, now uh, we can see that in the lines from uh, 55 to 62 the manner of his moving hands were so mechanical and monotonous as the foolish and senseless repetitions of words and phrases of his writing so just as he is foolishly and he foolishly and senselessly repeated words and phrases in his uh, writings just as the same way Shadwell is moving his hands repetitively and monotonously mechanically in that string instrument dancing master saint andre cannot complete cannot compete with the shadow in the precision of the rhythm of his musical performance here also saint andre he was also popular as a musician and he is also a popular dancer as well so the dancing master even saint andre even cannot compete with the shadwell in his movements while he was rhythmically playing uh, rhythmically performing for his music his performance as a band master was so outrageous that Singleton swore to give up the heroic but comic part of villainous villarious so he even goes so far when we when he um sarcastically uh, satirizes Shadwell that see even Singleton after seeing his clumsy performance as a bandmaster it was so outrageous and Singleton even swore to give up the heroic but comic part of hilarious okay now site of coronation now the coronation will happen where the coronation is happening now explained by dryden from line 64 to 78 suburb of london so this coronation is going to happen in suburb of london once stood a small round watch over called barbellon fell into ruins so there uh, the coronation ceremony is going to happen once there was a watchtower watch over called barbellon and now it is in ruins so this is situated in street uh, known as Aldous Gate in London. Later many brothels arose by uh, prostitutes. So here this place where many prostitutes are residing and brothels are there. And uh, the street, this uh, place we ha can see in street in Aldous Gate in uh, London. That place was used as a theater for the training of young actors for the stage. So this now uh, place is in ruin and that place is used by theater actors. Not that popular and legitimate actors but the mainly the 
sons and daughters of these prostitutes who wanted to enter into theater they wanted to they usually have their training uh, on that stage on that watch over place but one none of the great tragedians practiced there like i said when flecknor thought uh, about his son's potentialities he burst into parental rapture so flecknor is thinking about the qualities in order to to cover the place of the emperor of the empire dalard he burst into parental raptures he was so proud about shadwell for his dullness for his clumsiness whatever he has as a suitable uh, ruler of the empire dullness now let's see uh, about nicery theater from line 79 to 89 wretched nonsensical interludes and dramas are welcome here welcome there means welcome and in nursery theater uh, since the place has men of deprived state deprived of taste and incapable of appreciating anything better so this place where the coronation ceremony is going to happen where brothels you can see where less accomplished theater artists will come and practice and also you can find nonsensical interludes and dramas are practiced there and we can see men of deprived state who has very low standards of taste taste and when who has low standards of taste they are incapable of appreciating anything better anything so elevated so that kind of people will go there and watch this nonsensical interludes and dramas this place was ideal for shadwell's coronation as flecknor observed and dryden makes fun of his dramas here characters in his plays are uh, absurd and meaningless so he says that see his dramas shadwell's dramas and characters both of them are absurd and meaningless how now we can see the arrangements are going to do in this place for shadwell's coronation persian carpets herringman ascanius and hannibal all these references are there from line 90 to 109 now the news of coronation spread far and wide so from the moment uh, flecknow decided that shadwell is going to the hair to the next uh, shadwell is going to succeed him that coronation the news of coronation spread far and wide so quickly multitude of dollars came to it from uh, banhill street and walting streets from far away places and from all the street nonsensical these kind of places many multitude of dollars came to attend this coronation the path to the coronation stage was not covered by persian carpet but by the loose fragments of the works of worthless poets and dramatists like hayward shirley ogilby and shadwell himself so this coronation the path to the coronation stage is not going to covered by persian carpet but here more suitably the loose fragments of the works of worthless poets and dramatics like hayward shirley ogilby and shadwell will be placed in this path and they'll walk over it and uh, they'll uh, get into the coronation stage the bookseller booksellers who were cheated on cheated for their dues gave the guard of honor so before getting coronated while the king to be walk king to be walks through that path to the coronation stage what will happen there will be a guard of honor by all the armies and the uh, alliances and all so here the guard of honor will be given by booksellers who were cheated for their dues and it will be headed by publisher herringman okay flecknow sits high throne right side shadwell at uh, the hope of all dalard of london so flecknow and shadwell both of them are there on the stage of the coronation and flecknow is now sitting on the high throne right side of shadwell okay the first hope was aeneas founder of rome so aeneas is uh, considered as the founder of rome who is also known as the first hope of rome and the second hope was ascanius his son first hope of london was flecno and the second hope is shadwell his son okay now moving on uh, line 110 to 128 loves kingdom and 12 owls flecno anointed his son with holy oil 
so as part of the rituals of coronation flecno anointed his son with a holy oil then he placed his left hand a mug of ale and symbolized the unsteadiness and the right hand a copy of love's kingdom a dull pa pastoral a tragic comedy by flecno so uh, just as uh, the kings will have their mark of power and authority after flecno anointing his son with holy oil he placed flecno placed shadwell's left hand a mug of ale that symbolizes unsteadiness and uh, in on the right hand in the right hand a copy of love's kingdom love's kingdom is a work by flecno which was a pastoral tragic comedy okay a chaplet of poppies uh, was placed on his head instead of crown poppies so what happens a chaplet cha a chaplet of poppies was placed on his head as a kind of crown instead of a crown poppies associated with the dullness and drowsiness these all symbolizes dullness drowsiness and steadiness and the you know sarcasm that uh, uh, dryden is making here the comparisons and the uh, symbols that he is fetching is so fabulous and witty just at that moment 12 owls 12 owls flew over the spot so the place in which this coronation is happening over that spot 12 owls flew just as this was happening this um, alludes to romulus founder of rome on the banks of river tiber 12 vultures flew over the place as a uh, as a good omen not goof good omen from the gods so in the epic we can see that's when uh, romulus was founding rome as a good omen 12 owls were flying over the place of banks of river tiber as a good omen just as the way just like that 12 owls flew over the spot of shadwell's coronation is happening as a good omen to the kingdom of dullness dullness or dullard flecknor dropped from his head dew of forgetfulness in liquid form so flecknor dropped from his head dew of forgetfulness in liquid form so now happening what is happening now flecknor is no more the king it was uh, shadwell so flecknor now dropped from his head dew of forgetfulness in liquid form because this is the kingdom of dullards the previous king won't be recognized and uh, now onwards everybody will forgive everybody is going to forget him so as the coronation finished flecknor dropped from his head a dew of forgetfulness in liquid form now from line 132 144 virtue so and blessings of flecknor flecknor wishes his son's great future so after this coronation he says that he wishes his son's great future may his ignorance and impudence increase more and more so he is still more dull and stupid than me but still his ignorance and impudence should increase as time passes more and more labor in vain let him labor in vain and produce nothing he'll be doing labor to produce things but he will produce nothing and may may he produce greater nonsenses if he produces something let him produce more great nonsenses kill works from line 145 to 158 we can see shadwell's indebtedness to indebtedness to charles sadly shadwell's own fools and forbes would be so dull and uninteresting that they would save shadwell from the change charge of being witty so he soon created fools and forbes in his dramas and works they are so full of dullness and for they are uninterested characters they they do not evoke any kind of interest or any kind of Uh, you know wit or laughter among the readers so they his own created fools and forbes will you know they will not allow shadwell to be witty shadwell to be more sensical and all so they have the charge of you know preventing shadwell from being witty now let's move on all his characters resembles him so the the dull characters the stupid and uh, uninterested characters created by shalwell actually resembles and reflects him let him not seek help from charles sedley who has witty and wrote prologue to shadwell's play epsom wells shadwell is a plagiarist so here he says that even though charles sedley 
who wrote a witty and uh, uh, moving prologue to Shadwell's play known as Epsom Wells, he should not seek, Shadwell should not seek help from Charles Shridley because he is witty, he is a good writer, okay? And Shadwell is a plagiarist as well. Now, he is going to mock him as a plagiarist uh, by comparing Shadwell and Ben Johnson from line 159 to 174. Characteristics of writings were, no, were rant and bombast. So, even though Shadwell likes and love and admire Johnson, he is nowhere near him and his characteristics of writing, it's always rant and bombast. Always we can see over flooded with emotions and... Uh, you know, nothing is proper in Shadwell's writings. He had no spark of Ben Johnson. Flecno can be proud about that. Flecno will be so proud and Flecno suitably can be so proud about uh, Shadwell's stupidity and impudence as he has no spark of Ben Johnson. He has committed literary theft with regard to Etheridge. Etheridge is another playwright of the age, a restoration age. It is believed that comedy of manners started with uh, Etheridge's compositions. And he has committed, Shalwell has committed literary theft with regard to Etheridge. So he says that he plagiarized from Etheridge's uh, works. Shadwell did mockery of love in his opera Psyche that Johnson never do. So he mocked and he made a mockery of love he has not properly managed the emotion love in his opera psyche that johnson will never do johnson here means ben johnson okay shadwell's plagiarism now he is going to talk about uh, shadwell's plagiarism from etheridge uh, as discernible from lines 175 to 202 so he made plagiarism uh, uh, Dryden alleges that he made plagiarism from Etheridge, removed bodies, bodily scenes from Etheridge's comedies, but it is clear to all when he copies such scenes. So Etheridge composed some uh, comedy of manners plays and we can see that Shadwell removed, Dryden says that Shadwell removed bodily scenes from Etheridge's comedies and he copied uh, this work as it is. Johnson and Shadwell share same physical quality but anything else. Both of them are stout people but anything else is not matching. Nothing else is common among them as far as literary quality is concerned as well as his treatment of uh, features, different things in the works considered nothing really matches between these two people his tragedies amuses while comedy is soporific effect so usually comedy should amuse but his tragedies shadwell's tragedies will amuse the readers while comedies will only evoke uh, disinterestedness or stupidity or his comedies are you know dull in nature satires are pointless and ineffective satires they are not evoking the, uh, the the aimed emotion among the readers. There is no satiric qualities in his satires. They are pointless. Why he is making that satire even that is not clear because that is his uh, satires are pointless and ineffective. Now from line 203 to 210 we can see the falling of Flecknoe. So, farcical word making and tunes for his songs, Flecno fell into the trap door just as he was telling his last words. So, Flecno was wishing every other best future to his son Shadwell and just as he was telling it, delivering his last words, uh, he was trapped and he fell into a trap door. And no more Flecno we can see. Now, his garments... Uh, his garment was carried by a sudden gust of wind flown from the interior of the earth and fell upon Shadwell, inheriting stupidity from his father. As Flecknoe was falling down uh, through the trap door, which was placed on the stage, his garment was carried out uh, by a sudden gust, a sudden wind, okay? And it fell upon Shadwell. This shows that he is going to inherit all the stupidity from his father. So, there ends... Uh, the satire like Mac Fleckno. Now let's see Dryden as a satirist. Absalom and Achitophel, the medal, Mac Fleckno. These are the masterpieces of political rivalry, personal animosity, and anti Puritan spirit. We can see these three things in these three uh, 
these three satires by Dryden, Absalom and Achitophel, the medal, MacFleck now, okay. Used techniques such as irony, so he mainly used irony, sarcasm and exuberant wit, okay. We, he used irony, sarcasm and wit, you know, to bring about the satirical effects. Three, stay, three great satirists of English. We can see uh, three great satirists. So, Dryden is one among them. Uh, Dryden, Pope. Pope belongs to the neoclassical age and Swift also uh, in the neoclassical age. So, Dryden, John Dryden, he is the master of scorn and contempt and Pope, master of rage and uh, Swift, master of disgust. So, these three emotions we can see in Dryden's uh, satires, we can see scorn and contempt. In Pope's, we can see rage and Swift's, we can see disgust. Okay, so they are evoking these emotions. They are using these emotions in order to bring about the satirical effect. Let's see some uh, satirical appreciations, I mean critical appreciation of the work MacFleck. No? So, here uh, this mock heroic epic mock heroic satire is situated in this in a heroic theme in a mock heroic theme that uh Flecno in search for a successor for his throne the empire of dullness and shareless holiness is aptly uh, placed that he is going to be the successor of uh, the empire of dullness dullard and you know he how he is the most suitable uh, successor for it you know what are the qualities that Shadwell is uh, carrying with him to make himself as a more suitable successor to this uh, empire of uh, dullness even though Shadwell is not that a bad uh, poet that Dryden is depicting him but he is carrying out all these things is that attack just it is unjust Shadwell is not at all a such a kind of so degraded and dull writer Shadwell as a comic poet is superior to Dryden so many critics believe that many of the uh, contemporary as well as the later critics believe that Shadwell as a comic poet is more superior to Dryden his personal animosity personal enmity towards Shadwell uh, brought him to write such a daresome satire against Shadwell but he was anything maybe he is not that superior to Dryden but he is anything but dull he is not cannot be called as dull or stupid Shadwell cannot be called as dull or stupid in a real manner now what is the more heroic frame that we can see in this uh, particular poem coronation it usually happens in epic works classical allusions we can see the allusion of Arian the allusion of Augustus the allusion to um, uh, Ascanius all these things classical allusions we can see the ceremonies so the ceremonies of the coronation ceremonies the choosing of a proper heir to uh, his throne by Fleck now all these things the the things are happening the flying of uh, 12 owls the 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 the, uh, the kingly apparels and all so all this uh, ceremony is Flecno anointing his son all this ceremony is related to the coronation we can see here in a mock heroic manner so this is the mock heroic frame we can see in here in this work so that's all about Mac Flecno this was real quick we can see uh, an elaborate lecture if you want you can comment that in the comment session if you want that line by line summary and also don't forget to visit my website there too you'll find an elaborate lecture about McFlick no Dryden all the works by Dryden or all the major and minor authors that you need to study and you know uh, cover for your NTU GCNET JRF paper too and also Instagram is there you can follow me on Instagram there too we are sharing a uh, variety of materials Materials and use this whatsapp number call or uh, whatsapp me in this number in order to reach out to me to know anything related to the courses that we are sharing or any doubts that you have regarding the points that we are sharing in our youtube channel okay that's all about it meet you in the next video session thanks for watching this video if you like this video don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you wanted to have more content related to english literature and meet you in the next video session until then stay tuned to high point and bye bye